Hi, everybody, and welcome to Dublin Tech Talks podcast, The New Normal in association with Icon Accounting. Um, today, we have Adam Coleman, who's CEO of HR Locker. HR Locker is a SaaS based HR um, tool. Welcome to the show, Adam. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. I'll let you describe what HR, HR Locker do a bit better than what I can do. So, um, give us a bit of background about the product, where you're based, uh, and, and what it can do for businesses. Okay. Um... The product is, HR Locker is a HRIS SaaS product, which basically automates the recruitment, people management, training, development um, for companies within the tech, professional service, non-for-profit and construction sectors. It might seem like a a wide amount of sectors, but uh, we, we started off originally just doing tech professional services, but construction found us and we, we found a right, right little niche in there. And then the non-for-profits, I'll be honest with you, I love working with the non-for-profits because they know how to get the best out of everything. So our product works with companies who are scaling, companies who are managing. You could be dealing with, you, we could be dealing with a company with six employees. We could be dealing with a company with multiple thousands. Uh, it really, really matters. But it, it scales with your company. It's very price uh, unprohibitive, if, if that's such a word. <laughs> um, and yeah, and it's building out all the time. We're an Irish company. Uh, we're, we're bootstrapped, self-developed, no investors, um, uh, getting on with stuff and all good. Um, and we, we've been promoting uh, remote working since, since the inception of the product. And we've been talking about it and it's obviously very topical now. So, our, so it allows companies to manage um, uh, people in office, remote, dual working, and it's particularly now we're, 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 like our, our stats are gone through the roof because people are trying to figure out how to go back to work and our product can, can schedule people when they're in and out of the office and all that sort of good stuff. So, so it's actually COVID has been very good for us. Um, and uh, you can go on and you can have a two week free trial. Uh, if you don't like it, you exit off, but, but it, it's sold in components. So depending on what business problem that you that you want to solve uh there is features that will solve that business problem for you great and i i was looking around the tool it's it's nice and easy to use um it's the ui is lovely the ux it's 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 not complex which you know you look at a lot of the hris tools and it's massive complex um kind of implementation kind of training everything like that it doesn't seem to be no, it's, it's quite it's quite easy. Uh, my our record to date is we had a company in oil and gas company in Monaco, and they were in six different locations around the world. They had two hundred and fifty employees, and we got every aspect of the product up and running for them in less than two days. Yeah. Now I never want to go through that again because it was like fourteen, fifteen hour days, but it 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 showed us how quickly we can do it. But when you start talking to customers about it. You know, they have this presumption that it's going to take forever to implement, but it's not. And, 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 and a lot of the times we spend a huge amount of time educating people of how quickly things can be done <clears throat> if they have the appetite for it. And, and we're not a massive company. Like there's only 16, uh, 15 of us permanently and about three contractors who work with us. And then we have another bunch of contractors that come in on occasions. So we're not a massive company. But because we built it in Microsoft Azure and, and, and the Azure platform is very, very good, um, it, it gives us a lot of credence and we can, we can roll out features very, very quickly. We adapted sort of like the agile approach. So we'll go out with first rendition, second rendition, third rendition on v- various features and whatever. So we've got a technology roadmap as big as your yin yang um, and it's, it's slowly but surely happening. And, and as we're rolling out, our customers are growing with us um our churn rate's quite low uh, normally people leave us because they they have been taken over by a larger organization that are deploying workday or whatever the case may be uh, which will cost them an arm and a leg two houses and whatever while we only cost you a weekend and a hinge and uh we we have um and even in some of the companies who've gone to the likes of work they have come back to us yeah. because they find workday too 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 big do you know yeah it's, um, um... It, it's something that you said there about the growth of remote. Um, we're, we're conducting a survey at the moment of the of, of the members of the of the group. So we have about three and a half thousand members. Now at the moment, we've only twenty five percent of the people surveyed want to work more than four days a week in an office. Um, so from traditional 
based where a lot of people would be would be expected to be in you know there's 75 percent of people will want to work less than you know less than three days in an office and even at that uh, only I have the results here, 48% are happy to return to an office. So growth in applications that are going to be able to track time allocation to projects to be able to easily upload that kind of cloud-based HR person is, is yeah. going to be, you know, the new... Oh, we're, we're saying bring it on because like uh, it was very funny. Uh, I got involved with uh, the... Uh, there's a group called Grow Remote. I don't know if you're familiar with yeah, them. Yeah, no, we had, we had them on the show. Yeah, Tracy, was it? Yeah. Yeah, she's great. She's she's a dynamo. I spent two and a half hours in the car with her on the way to Belfast just before the COVID thing hit. And because there was no Grow Remote uh, chapter in, in Northern Ireland, yeah. so we, we, we had just established a presence in Northern Ireland, with one or two people up working up there. And I said to her, I said, look, come on, let's go and, and show Northern Ireland a bit about remote working. And um, and yeah, it's 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 with Northern Ireland and various places, it's, it's a trust thing. It really is. And like, we, we've been talking about it for forever and a day and not because, you know, uh, like our product can manage it. That's fine. But it's just makes so much sense. The yeah. savings, I, I did a, if, if anyone wants to, you can, you can, and you don't believe me, you can Google Adam Coleman disrupt HR and you'll see in 2018, I did a, a 50 minute piece in disrupt HR on, on remote working and why, HR people, if they really want to get around that boardroom table, that they should basically start promoting this because they can turn their their HR department into a cost, from being a cost into an asset management type scenario. Um, so I, 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 it's now been forced on people. Yeah. And, and, and the biggest problem is, is that in the past, uh, uh, if we say, for instance, you're in your job in Dublin or Galway, Cork, London or whatever, and you wanted to work remotely, um, you would never have gone up to the manager and say, you know, I'd like to live in Valencia and work remotely because they'd laugh at you, right? Um, but now it's true. And what happens is that people who want to work remotely, they end up leaving their employer and then going to some company like Scraping Hub or whoever else or HR Locker for that matter, because we're now dispersed completely uh, and, and come working for us type thing. Um, but now it's a situation where employers are going to be forced and, but it's, it's an easy force for, for people in tech and people in, we say, professional jobs because the savings are massive. Like yeah. we're based in La Hinch, for instance, in County Clare. Um, we, have, we, have, we've, we have two developers who were in, in Brazil and they're now actually in Milltown and Ennis because they chose to move over here. We're almost doing the reverse of the scale here. Um, we, have, we, had a, we had a guy basically in, in Manchester we have Ellie in, in the north, um, our development managers in Galway, uh, and we have another guy then who works for us in India on occasions. And, but it's, it takes a while to, to get into it. Even, even though we weren't 100% dispersed before uh, COVID, there was an element of like, I, I had a product would turn around and say, oh, we're looking for a customer success manager. You know, they really need to be here. And I'm going to say, no, they don't. Yeah. So, so now it's proven it that it is. So even us who was quite open to it, we're now completely open. We were actually, and this is no, I, I, I kid you not, we were pushing to sign for a big, big office in La Hinch, right? And trying to get funding together for whatever last November. And they were really slow and I was getting really annoyed, but I'm not looking for it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't happening. It's, 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 it's going to be interesting what, what happens. To, uh, I don't know the last time you've been in Dublin, <clears throat> but all the new office blocks in the North Quay, HubSpot have just signed their new lease around um, the, the South Quay and there's a lot of office space and I know a good few CFOs have already said that, you know, we've spent a lot of money getting people not to come to the office and there's certain American businesses that are saving 20, 30 million a month by not feeding their business. Yep. Um, you know, they're massive savings. So I can't see a sudden want by the people that pay the invoices to say, okay, let, let's put another 120 million cost into our business. I, 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 I find it difficult to see. Yeah, I see. I, th I think, I think the issue is, you know, that you have to differentiate between pure remote and what we call dual working. And we, um, we've coined the phrase hashtag dual working.com or whatever the hell we're using these days. But we, we had our hashtag, our favorite hashtag was uh, work is no longer a place from yeah. about 2015 onwards. 
but I, I think, and you know, when you talk to people in Grow Remote and people who are into remote companies, and they, t they t tell you about the wonderful things around remote working and whatever. But there's a couple of things that are really difficult, right? Um, and COVID will have shown a lot of them at, at, up. Uh, and there's a lot of people who can't wait to get back to the office. But then there's a percentage who don't want to come back to the office. As you, or, or, and I think, I think a lot of people will prefer to have both. They yeah. might work four days a week at home or three days a week at home and two days in the office. So I think dual working will happen more so than, than pure remote. Although there's no reason why pure remote shouldn't happen, do you know? Yeah. 20, 20%, 17.15 want to do full-time remote. So, you know, I, 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 as you were saying, I think it's a confidence thing. I think people now can put their hands up and say, here, this is what I've delivered when I wasn't in the office. Yeah. Um, but but, but hard, it's hard though. Pure remote though, yeah. uh, Gavin, is... Uh, it takes a while when, and, 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 you know, anyone who's been involved in recruitment will know this, you know, when, when you're recruiting and hiring people, it's the hardest job in the world because you have a client on the recruitment side and I don't do recruitment anymore, but you have a client on the recruitment side and you have the individual and either of that part of, of that deal can change its mind at any one moment in time. Yeah. So likewise, if you're recruiting for remote workers, my experience has been, they have to have a reason to be remote. Right. So so it could be down to something like, you know, I'm living in London, but my my great granddad has left me a big house in Kerry, you know, um, or it's it could be um, it, what happened in my instance was, um, you know, my mum had a stroke and she was care of my dad and my my sister. So I had to move back to Ireland, you know. Um, so I think if they have a motivation to go remote, it makes a lot of sense. At the end of the day, if you are looking at graduates, say, for instance, you're hiring 10 IT graduates, okay? Like, I'm sorry, when I graduated and I was 21, I didn't want to be in the hinge, maybe at the weekends. I wanted to be in the middle of Temple Bar, having a great crack, chasing women, doing whatever, do you know? And, and, and that's what the graduates are going to still want, do you know? Um, it's, it's about balancing that as a business. Yeah, it, it's 100%. The, but with... with whatever comes in come August about spacing and all that kind, you know, there won't be room to have your hundred percent employees in the business. hundred percent. We no actually already, we have in, in our offices, our offices are basically 600 square foot, right? Uh, at the front, at the front of my house. Okay. And we had enough space for about 50, 14 people, even though we had 15 people working here with people working from home, whatever. But now we're going to have to reduce that right down to probably eight. Yeah. You know? So you're going to have to figure out as a business, you know, who, who when, and where. I am, and, you see, we have HR Locker, so we can schedule our dual working yeah. from HR Locker. No, but, but that, that's what will become more prevalent. Yeah. Um, because there are, as you mentioned, scale-ups and startups, and, you know, I'll, I'll hopefully be getting into something like that kind of August time. And, and that is really important to have a, 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 a central system early and get it done right. As you said, the, the implementation um, previously took what you know, fourteen hours, fifteen hours a day because it was new. Like if you start that early, and you're when you, I've worked with lots of scaling businesses. Yeah, and the the HR function can be third, fourth on the line, and you're going when you've just hired thirty people. You yeah. Know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You managing day to day that isn't a spreadsheet, and and people want to be managed, irrespective of what people say well, we, what we are what we are gavin and, and our product won't suit everybody <clears throat> we're, we're what, what we call a, a deliberate development organization and what that basically means is that we put adult development at the center of everything we do yeah. and we also develop the features in hr locker like that so if you want if you want a coercive hris that you know if a person turns up late three times in a row they automatically get a disciplinary don't come near us you know yeah. what we what we do is we put the hands and control in, we put the, ha the hands and the work control in the hands of the employees. And then there's a sort of a, a light level where the management can actually see and approve and do stuff. But the employees are allowed to drive their own careers, drive their own stuff. And the productivity and the training and all that sort of stuff is all in there, do you know? But, but that, that's, that's what I mean. The employees actually want that. They want to be able to be seen that there's the, I'm coming in at, say, a developer, mid-level you know, I, I'm five years, four years in my job. I think I'm ace. 
I want to see where I can be by six, seven years. Is this the company for me? Yeah. What training are you going to throw me on? What's available to me? Um, do yeah, but I think, I think that's, I think that's, you know, you get that, what I call the, the, the rock star developers who aren't rock star developers. Yeah. What can you do for me? Well, actually, no. What can you do for yourself? Yeah. I will basically give you all the tools. I will give you all the ability to do stuff, but you have to work for yourself. And if you want a job uh, that you're just getting paid because you've got four years experience in C-sharp.net and they're going to pay you 40 or 50 or 60 grand, bugger off. Don't want you. Simple That's as that. They, they do want you, you do as a business want that uh, retention tool to be able to to grow people um with within that and that's what you know the 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 employee development side of what you yeah, have no, I, I completely agree the, the the retention is to keep people at the edge of their development all the yeah. time so uh -huh. when we hire people we want people to who want to develop we don't want somebody who wants a job we don't want somebody who wants to be a rock star c-sharp developer because if he is only going to be a C sharp developer, you know he's 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 going to be bored off his mind. Uh, I was going to say another part of anatomy there, but of his mind in in a couple of years if he doesn't or she doesn't have the capability of wanting to develop. Yeah, but I that I think those rock stars have been f f finally found out uh, yeah. from a couple of businesses that still accept them. Um, well, I, they they you know they you know the thing that was going around a couple of years ago where it says you should only spend two years in every single company and you could you go. Like that's that's a load of crap because at the end of the day, <clears throat> and I look at CVs that come into us, and I spend a year here, a year here. What you got found out in each place? Yeah. What was your reason for leaving each one? Or more importantly, the easier question is, what was it? What was it that made you put your CV together? Because as you know yourself, Gavin, putting a CV together is a pain in the ass, right? Yeah. So what was it that put your CV to get that made you put your CV together? And they look at you and they go like, Jesus, like I've never been asked that question before. Yeah. Cause they're more used to been hearing, you know, what do you want to be in five years time? I'm like, what a stupid question. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I'm, yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, I, I, I fully understand that one. The, yeah, it just didn't work out every six months, uh, 12, nine months, and then 12 months in this one. But the, the next one lasted 11 months. And you're like, okay. <laughs> you look for reasons. Like, I look at my own career. I left, I left hey, or Montrose because Jen's dad died. I left... Uh, professional placement group because I got let go, right? I'll be straight. But then I got let go because the guy who hired me left and went to another company. I went to work with him. Mm. I left HRM because I was I was just bored with recruitment and I wanted some in-house stuff. Yeah. I left O2 after six years or Digiphone O2 after six years because my mum got ill, do you know? Yeah. Um, and what I'm looking for is real reasons. And, and the problem that the whole concept of being a DDO, right, is really hard because what we have is an open, transparent company, open, transparent meritocracy. So people can challenge everybody else in the organization, okay? And so I have our testers challenging me on stuff, which I haven't got a clue of, and I'm going to educate me, do you know? And, and but, but what the idea is in most organizations, when you go into the organization, a person goes in, they bring two people to work. The first one is the one who does the job, and the second one is the one who tries to hide the stuff they can't do. Right. Yeah. And developers are classic for that. Is and, 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 and what we'll tell you that is uh, um, you'd say to a developer, say, hi, uh, we're doing this new app and we, we're using blah, 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 Ruby on Rails, whatever. It doesn't matter. Right. And um, and they go, oh, yeah, I can do that. But I'll have to do some research first. What that means is that they can't do shit around that area. Right. Yeah. But we've developed a, a culture in here that it's it's a badge of honor if you go. I don't know, or as, as that horrible advert was on during the boom time was when the guy stands up in the bus and he goes, I don't know what a tracker mortgage is. Yeah. Everybody, in, everybody in HR Locker applauds at that stage because it means <clears throat> I'm going to have to learn it. Will we go outside and get the expertise? And I can manage the expertise and learn it from them. And, and it's what, what it's doing is getting people thinking way beyond where they should be. Now, don't, it's really exciting. It's really fun. It's really hard, right? to keep that consistency going throughout the organization. Because when people aren't used to that type of culture and they arrive in here, it's like, shit, we, we, we hired one guy who was actually working with our product, with the customer. And he came on board about four months ago. And he will tell, he, he, he will tell you and, and that he struggled with, with how we worked because we were so open, do you know? Yeah. Um, I can't come to work today, why? Well, 
the reason I can't come to work today and you would explain why. And that's okay. Yeah. But if you lie to us, oh, not good. Yeah, I, 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 that's how I work. <laughs> yeah. When I was managing teams in, in, in a couple of years ago and it was very much, just tell me why you're not doing it. I don't yeah. care. Just don't tell me you're going. I had one person tell me they were going to do doctor and they were sitting and, and I walked past and they're in a coffee shop. And I'm just like, yeah. You know, what, what are you doing? Like, what, why? Just be honest. If you can't be honest with whoever you're working with, why are you there? So what we have done, if anyone, everyone, and anyone applies to HR Lock for a job, it's very simple. We have five behaviors or principles that we work to and that we've developed in house. And one is the normal one teamwork, the other one is, is, is flexibility. Um, the third one, and actually we called it agile for a while to keep the developers happy. We changed it back to flexibility because it was just ridiculous. Um, and, and that has a title and a, it has basically a definition and then it has what good looks like under each. And then, and then we have trust and truth and we have ownership and we have business integrity and that's it. And when we hire anybody into HR Locker, we look for, are these guys good at this? We don't hire for skills, we hire for attitude, right? Yeah. And you know, you have to have an understanding on what you're about. You have to know X, Y, and Z. Or sometimes what happens is that we will go out and we, if we, if we have a, a little nuance around the technology that we don't know, we go out and we get somebody from Upwork or from some of our, some of our, our talent pool that we, we give projects to. And they'll, they'll do it. Our internal guys will learn from it and then they move on. But they're always at the edge of their development at all, 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 every, at all the time, which is hard. It is really hard, you know. And, and do you find, obviously, you're, you're, you're in Lahinch and, you know, it's a bit, there isn't as many probably developers that you need down in Lahinch as there would be, say, in... in no, but that's why, we, that's why we're, we're a dispersed workforce. That's yeah. why we can hire anyone from anywhere. And, and is, is, do you feel that's allowed you to be better in your hiring and oh, have, less, have less restrictions? 100%. Like, there's a whole, like, Tracy Kyo in Grow Remote, she proved immediately after a period of time, like was that if you, if you decide to hire remote workers, all of a sudden your pool goes, like to be honest with you, we had one, we had one developer who I, I was actually living in a hinge and he's left us a month ago, right? And he was with us for six years, okay? And, um, and I'm glad he's gone, I'm glad for him and I'm glad for us, right? Because his set of principles weren't colliding with ours, but there was no love lost. He told us last June that he was thinking of going, yeah, but give us enough time to be able to 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 change in order to do that, and that's the type of organization you want. You know, yeah. we're not meeting his needs; he's not meeting our needs. Let's not have a big barney about it. Let's talk about it, and then and then people make decisions like grown adults, and that's why we put adult development at the center of what we do. You know, yeah, no, I think clever businesses look at it that way. There's still a lot of businesses that would do it the more. Yeah, and it's, well, there's, uh, a, there's, a, there's a great, there's a great, I always keep shouting out books when I'm uh, on things like this, right? <clears throat> and they're always different ones and it freaks people out. Anyone who follows me on LinkedIn and stuff is a Jesus Christ, where does he get all the time to read books? First off, I'm dyslexic. That's the first thing. So with the advent of, of Audible, my learning has gone through the roof completely, right? Yeah. So, um, so there's a great book called um, The Entrepreneur Revolution. It's nothing to do with being an entrepreneur. And it was written by a guy called Daniel Creasy. And he talks about it, about the change in mindset happening uh, from the Industrial Revolution where people go to jobs from nine to five to where the millennials and the Zezers want to go or whatever. And, you know, we have brought these people into the world and, and they are actually teaching us. So everybody complains about the millennials. I don't complain about them at all. Like, we're the, we're the problem that, they're, that they are the way they are. So therefore, suck it up, you know, and, and, and get the best of them because they are fantastic people. And we've now generated a world with COVID that's com completely in debt, right? And, and, and they're going to have to try and bail out of it. So they're going to have to sort of uh, step up to the mark. But in general, the world has changed. And if you look at the Entrepreneur Revolution book by Daniel Priestley, and you look at how he's developed as a person, and this guy's worth billions now at this stage, mm. not just on book sales either, by the way. Um, but he, 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 he depicts a, a, a future and how you should do stuff in the future. And he didn't know COVID-19 was coming, but he had it pinned, you know? 
Yeah. And people will mix work and they will work mix home. Like I, as I, I just said to you beforehand, Gavin, I went out for a surf an hour before I'm talking to you, but I'll work on till like eight o'clock tonight. Do you know? Yeah, I, I, I definitely think that's the the big sea change. It's the especially in Dublin, um, people are sick of sitting in traffic. They're sick of you know not being able to get places. You know, and it's going to come into a place of I will do my I will do my work and I'll do my work better and I'll probably work harder for you if you're more flexible with me. Oh, we know we know our productivity since we've gone completely the, the completely remote has gone up 20, 40, 20 to thirty percent, maybe forty yeah, percent. There's, um, there's another business that um, work human that um, spoke on this as well. Yeah, I think theirs went up forty percent, uh, nearly fifty percent. Yeah. It's, it's it's stark like it's and like our our uh, the reason i can say it so confidently because our product m can measure productivity do you know what i mean yeah they measure it to use of time sheets and projects and all that sort of stuff and we're churning stuff out a lot quicker um now but i think i think the important thing though is if you are going to look at hiring remote people they have to have a reason to be remote and it could be a reason here's a classic reason the reason i left dublin and by the way i think dublin's probably the best city to live in, in the world. And I'm not saying that just to blow smoke up people's backsides. Uh, I've, I've lived in New York, I've lived in London, and I've lived in, in, in Dublin. And uh, I think Dublin's brilliant. But when I was 20, 30, 31, and my wife had a really good HR manager's job in another company, and we had two kids, right? One, one, and one, two. And uh, we were living in Drumcondra and working in Baggett Street. Uh, it was a bloody nightmare. I used, it used to, and this was this is nineteen, this is nine two thousand and one. We'll say it used to take me ten minutes to get in in the morning and an hour and a half to get get it back in the evening. And this is only four miles. It was easier to walk, but I couldn't walk because I had the kids. And people say, "Hey, if you should have wheeled them or whatever." Yeah, in the rain. But do you know what I mean? So the reason we made a conscious decision back then to leave, and well, we went to the UK, right? Because I just had enough of it. Yeah. Um. But as a city, it's a fantastic city. But it's that it's not just Dublin. It's all cities have that problem. And everyone goes on about the housing. I'm I'm talking. To, we're we're talking to people about remote working, and people are going on. Oh, the housing crisis. I said, if you allow people to work remotely, and if what percentage did you say? Forty three percent want to, yeah, work from home. If you took forty three percent of people away from Dublin who are working in Dublin, you would have no housing crisis, my man. None. Yeah. None. No, it's a, it's the, the, it's, it's above obvious in my mind. Um, yeah. But it comes back to the, it, it, one of the questions I actually want to talk about and, and go to, it's, it's around the, the, the policies and, and how a business manages it and how, how business are set up, if they have the right tools. Oh, when, we were, when, we were, when we were talking about remote working for years and, you know, you, I'd have a HR uh, director, a professional or manager come to me and says, we've got a, a remote working policy. So... So you need to establish an environment where it's safe for me to go to you and say, I want to work remotely. I know my boss doesn't like me to do that. So therefore, if I go remote, that's it. My career is dead in the water, you know? So yeah. don't, don't talk to me about policy. Show me the practice, do you know? And like, I remember we, we were talking myself and Tracy a while ago, and we were saying like, there's, there's four things around sort of remote working that's really important. It's the culture of the business and the people within the business the tech that you're using. And yeah, we use Teams. Other people use Zoom. Other people use Log Me In, whatever. It doesn't make any difference. Communication tools. And obviously we use HR Locker Plug Plug uh, to schedule our people or whatever. But it's culture, tech, policy, and practice. And people forget the practice. Mm. Because it's not like, if you have a manager working in an organization, he's managing five or six different people, and they're all coming in and having coffee and going around the water cooler and all that sort of stuff, right? That's one way of managing people, which yeah. is free in-house. But then you have them, if you're managing remote people, it's a learned trait. You can teach them how to do it. It's, you don't wake up in the morning and you're all of us are, you're not born to be a, a remote manager or a remote leader. You know, you can teach people this shit. You can do it, you know, and it's not that difficult. And, and do, do you think if businesses don't adapt to, to doing that, that they'll fundamentally fail over the next couple of months and years? Is that a... <laughs> That's, I, I don't think it's going to happen as quickly as everybody thinks it's going to be. I think, I think the companies who adapt quick enough will, will end up with a way better advantage from every perspective. Costs, retention, 
all that sort of stuff. But it, it's not down to whether I work in Dublin and live in League Slip or live in Donegal. It's down to the culture within the business. And what drives that culture is the leaders within that business. Yeah, and, and cult, there's a lot of culture talked about it and you read about certain businesses and their culture and then you talk to people who work in there and they go, that's a load of baloney. Um, I 100% agree with you. I would say, you know, how many companies have their behaviors and their values on the wall and nobody knows how, what they are? If you walk into any of those organizations and you walk straight down to somebody and you see the ball passed on the wall, you say, okay, what are your three behaviors, your, your three values, or your, your three competencies? If they can't tell you, anyone can tell you, they failed, right? Yes. It's, 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 it's an exercise in, in bullshit. But like what we do in terms of the cultural piece with flexibility, teamwork, um, initiative and execution, um, ownership and trust and truth, what we do is we live those every day. We hire against those. We fire against those if we have them. Thank God we haven't. We'll actually have one. Um, and we reward against those and we promote against those and people get all the advantages against those, do you know? Yeah, and I think that's the important part, the, the living the values rather than having them on the wall. There's a Oh, having them on the wall. Like, actually, to be honest with you, we, we, um, I remember Crystal came to me and, and she said, you know, we should put all of our, we call them principles, right? Because, yeah. because we're a DDO, that's what they call them. And, um, and she said to me, she says, we should put them up and have them really nice on the wall and whatever. I said, listen, let's try and get them into people's heads first. Then we stick them on the wall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, there's, uh, I think there was one, I can't remember the company that put them on the floor, so you have to walk over them every day and see them. That's not a bad idea. That's not no, a bad idea. I, I'm trying to remember who it was, but uh, I'll, I'll try and find out before. Um, so w what's the next evolution then for HR Locker? You're, you're, you're obviously revenue-based at the moment. You're, you're, you're not finance-based. It's, it's all revenue. It's revenue. Uh, we went out and we got a bit of a loan from SPCI a while ago, uh, which was great. Uh, uh, and any, by the way, any tech company who aren't uh, going out and getting this money, they should be taken off the shop with a shovel because we got 300K at 4% over eight years. Yeah. So, and like that's, it's not quite free money, but it's not so bad, right? Yeah. It's certainly better than any venture, venture capital will ever, ever give you. And um, that, that allowed us to get to a next level. Uh, we probably will look for investment towards the back end of this year because our plan is to do a US market entry uh, in 2021. And, you know, people say, oh, it's a web product. You don't have to go there. Nah, no, you do. You have to. Yeah, and yeah. plus the fact, it, when we, we, we may take on a, um, a, a smart investor in Ireland before that, but we'll go over there and we will do a Series A round in the States, not anywhere else. And that would be for equity? Oh, and yeah, yeah. We'll, we, we, we'll probably go for a raise in somewhere between four and six million over there. Brilliant. And, and then and is, the, is the product... I know nothing's ever fi finalized. It's a product. Oh, not a chance, no. We are. Is there, is there, you know, you're looking at new additions. And oh, look, we, we had, like, we started off, it was time on, time off. It was literally people, it was literally absence management, holiday management, um, and a basic timesheet thing to to keep the working time at happy. Yeah. Um, we've, we've then basically evolved from that to a completely HRIS. We have our training management tool called CPD in there. Uh, we have our HR docs, which is all the digital signatures, so you can get people to sign documents no matter where they are. Uh, we have a fully blown applicant tracking system in there, which you can post jobs to Facebook, LinkedIn, 10 job board, blah, 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 all of that. We replied the classic scenario. We put on the onboarding module, and then we launched uh, about a month and a half ago uh, our performance management module called Real Term Reviews, which is shit hot. And we will probably go into the US with that feature alone and have all, oh, by the way, oh yeah, we have all this other stuff, but this is the stuff that we want to sell over here for now, you know? Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's an amazing, no. it's an amazing product. As I said, I was going through the product. It's a, it's a nice yeah. clean product, which is, uh, you know, some of these tools that you can, especially in recruitment or HR world, it's, you know, they're not, <laughs> they're very- yeah, like our, our market is, our market's really weird. It's huge worldwide. Um, there's probably, there's thousands of competitors, but we say in the cloud, piece that has all of the bits. So you can come in, you can buy, oh, well, I want time off only, and I want this, and you can add to it as time goes on. So you can start off, like our, our basic, if you have 15 employees and you want our basic product, it's 399 euros a year. Yeah. That's what it is, Not, that's for nothing, right? And it'll take you about 20 minutes to set it up. <clears throat> but what, what happens is, is that, and the reason we started taking the slow approach was because 
You have a lot of these singular products who might do employee retention, they might do just recruitment, they might do employee engagement or satisfaction or training. So we, we took it slow and started developing all the modules. And we had this initial scenario that we want to allow small companies act big and big companies act smart because a lot of the big companies are tied in with big systems that cost them an arm and a leg. And with the advent of cloud and SaaS, you know, their legacy, their shit, I mean, they're, they're so far away now. Um, like I remember doing a talk about three years ago and, and said that I could cloud enable your business with every single aspect for about 400 euros a month, you know? So automate everything, finance, HR, CRM, sales, marketing, you know, you take all of them on, it's not going to cost you any more than four or 500 quid a month, you know? Yeah, I was at the, um, oh, what you call it, Frankie Sheen's thing in January a few years ago and um, Pendulum, and one of the speakers talked about, uh, you know, if you really want to make money, do it once and sell it forever. Don't keep, don't keep re redoing it because you'll only, you have to sell it individually. So uh, yeah. automation is really... You know, if, if you're not automation tasks, you're just adding workload. It's around, you know, recruitment but, automation, HR automation, everything. But the biggest challenge for us, I'll be honest with you, is education. Yeah. And, it's, it's, and what I mean by that is, is that, you know, you're, you're educating. You, like, if you take any entrepreneur, it doesn't matter whether he's running a, an insurance company or whatever. I'm, I'm educating him or her and saying, we can, we can pull all the admin out for you. No problem, right? But then, depending on who you're selling to, if you're selling to the CEO or the owner, that's fine. You can see the savings, the ROI. There's actually, if you Google HR Locker ROI Calculator, right, there's actually a little exercise you can go in and you can do 10 minutes and it'll show you on our basic product how much money you can save. And depending on the number of features, it goes between 12x to 50x, right? Mm. So, so you have to educate people that... And the problem is sometimes when you're selling to them, and if you're selling to a HR manager, some of them will actually, the, the non-visionary ones will say, oh my God, I'm not buying that because that's going to do me out of a job, right? Mm. Uh, which is not. What it will do is remove all of the clunky crap that they have to do on a daily basis and allow them to do their real HR job. And some of them aren't able to do the real HR stuff and they hide behind administration and spreadsheets and all that sort of stuff, you know? If, so if, education's if, massive. Yeah, if you can't adopt it, automation into your into your job if you don't want to do your job quicker if you don't want to do your job easier there's a problem straight away uh, and that's one of the things i always talk to businesses when i talk about recruitment it's you know recruitment is it's not difficult but it's always done it's always nearly created to be difficult by businesses and you're like make it simple an ats i was having a look at the ats you have a good ats system can save you so much time uh, posting jobs, just looking at applications, quick responses, yes, no, maybes, all that kind of stuff. It's uh, the skill, the skill in recruitment, right? And uh, I and the recruitment industry, as you know, is worth billions, right? Yeah. And um, they, it's it shouldn't be worth billions. It's worth billions because people are lazy and are afraid, and that's basically it, right? Because any idiot in this day and age can go onto a free Indeed account or whatever post an advert and they're going to have applications come through, right? Where the skill is, uh, and uh, the really good recruiters have it, but it, it's in the selection. It's understanding what the person is going to be doing in the company and will they operate within the culture within that business. And so it's the class scenario of past performance predicts future behavior where you're looking at where have they done it in the past. And if they haven't done it in the past, can you find where they're motivated, where you find out why are they going to be motivated to do it in the future? Yeah. And once you, once you get those people, and, and some recruiters are fantastic at that, um, and a lot of them are absolutely particularly shite at it, to be honest with you, where you get like 10 CVs thrown at you, and you go, like, sure, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing for me? You're just farming CVs to me. I want, like, I, I, I'm, I'm the worst person to recruit for in the world, because having been a recruiter, I'm a nightmare, right? So I know all the tricks and bullshit that goes on with it. And, if, and I haven't used a recruiter ever, to be honest with you. And, um, but, I, but there's some of them are worth their, they're worth their weight in gold. I know that, right? Yeah. Um, but what happens is, is that if I was using a recruiter, I would say, okay, here's the spec. Here's our culture. Here's the stuff I want to happen, right? Now, I want three people. And you've got three weeks to find them for me, right? 
and I'm not going to any other agency or anything like that. And because of that, I want a discount. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but you know what I mean? And I can guarantee you, because I, I remember when I was a recruiter, uh, we, used to, we used to offer um, guarantee periods. I used to offer guarantee period of a year. Yeah. Wouldn't have a problem with it. Yeah. No, I've, I've, if, you, if, you, if you're good at your job and, and in recruitment anyway, and you're, you're able to, you should be able to stand over your people. That's just... But it's, it's, an, it's an amazing skill for a CEO to have, or anyone in business to have. It's an amazing skill. And I'm lucky to have come up, you know, like, you know, if you take the building industry and you get the guy who becomes contracts director, they always come from somewhere. They yeah. might have started out as a bricklayer or a civil engineer. Well, in the overall business piece, I started off as a recruiter. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's in any industry and that's actually something that i've talked about before it's you know it's, it's the adoption of the new normal even in, in the recruitment industry and in the hr industry in, in, in like things aren't going back to where they were um hr has to adapt uh talent acquisition recruitment industry is adapting quite quickly because there's tools been thrown at them left right and center if they don't they're gone um gone are the days of saying that our database holds ten thousand people who gives it whatever yeah. Well, it's not about that. It's actually about how many 50 people you know and what do they do now. That's the reality of what it is. It's less, nearly less what you know in the recruitment game. Uh, yeah. More about your brand and what you're doing. So HR is, has to adapt and the reliance on probably larger iconic systems might not be the, the right way. That's, for yeah, that's one. And the other problem that you have in HR, to be fair, is that sometimes HR aren't allowed to do HR. True. So, yeah. so you get a lot of organizations who are overly coercive and they won't consider HR as it being important. They'll put engineering, tech, finance. Oh yeah, HR, yeah, that's Maggie who started as a receptionist when we, uh, a year ago. She's now our HR manager. No, no offense to Maggie and she may be an amazing person, may end up being the best HR manager in the world, but that's how they, that's how they, they treat it. And if you look at all of the companies who've been massively successful, and I hate this horseshit, you know, like head of people and head of laughter. And like, for God's sake, you know, just call it as it is. Like, Jesus, it wrecks my head, you know. Um, and even when we were hiring uh, our first customer success person, um, and they were saying, it's a customer. I was going, like, what's customer success? Oh, oh, it's this, that. And I says, it's account management. Yeah, same thing. Cool, right? Let's go. Right? And the, the whole point of it is, I know you have to keep up with the times because uh, otherwise everybody would be called um, personnel managers and stuff like that. But you know, and it's important to keep it up to date and stuff. But it's it's what they do on a daily basis. It's 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 the influence they have on a business. Like I was so lucky when I when I joined ESAT Digifone, I was about the fifth or sixth employee, and. I'd say I got the, the best MBA program done in living memory when working with that company. Because we grew it like from zero to 800 people in three years and it, it got sold for over a billion. Actually, it was the first Irish unicorn, basically, right? And which I've just thought about in my head there. Um, and, uh, and, but the, the attitude of the company, again, worked on behaviors. It worked on adaptability, teamwork, and customer focus. And if you weren't, if you were not basically accepted on those three, you never got hired. And that's ESAT Digifone. I'm going to differentiate between that to ESAT Telecom, so in case people actually know. And if you ask anybody who has worked in ESAT Digifone from, from 1996 till 2003, and you ask them what the culture was like in ESAT Digifone, I will, I will give you a hundred pounds if you can find three people who worked in that period of time that, say, that said it was less than brilliant, right? We'll, we'll put that out there. We'll, we'll, there you go, 100 quid. We'll, we'll, we'll wait to see videos flood through. That's it. Everyone, anyone you know, that, that it was incredible. Incredible yeah. place to work. Now, after 2003, I cannot be held responsible because I went to the UK, okay? <laughs> All right, we're, we're going we're gonna to have to leave it there, but it's been, it's been great chatting to you. Um, yeah. It's been really good learning about more about HR Locker and the, the culture and, and, and how you, you're yeah. developing there and, and the product itself. Could I have one last, one last uh, Go on. nugget to say, right? Forget about all your systems and all that sort of stuff. We had HR locker. It doesn't really matter. The most important thing you can do in your business is work on the culture within your business. And that's how people work, not what they do. And if you define out what good looks like to that and you hire against it, recruit against it, reward against it, and develop it into an open, trusting culture, 
um, if your product is anywhere near good, you'll do well. I, I completely agree with you there. Trust, trust makes businesses and it, it it's, creates the culture that allows it to prosper 100%. Um, Adam, thanks, Mel. Um, Adam Coleman, CEO of HR Locker, thanks for joining us today and we'll catch you soon. Thanks a million, Gavin.